Um, the topic of my speech is the E uh, writing system and its position among the scripts of East Asia. Um, the E writing system in, uh, in my speech refers to the traditional scripts of E writing rather than to Liangshan standard syllabary developed on the basis of the northern uh, uh, script variety used by Nosu E, uh, which uh, was put, which was put into official use in the 80s of the. Um, of the last century. Um, the traditional writing system is represented by a group of closely, closely related scripts that were and uh, to a limited extent are still used to write down several languages spoken by people belo belonging to E minority. It constitutes an example of writing that developed over uh, several hundred years in communities speaking different although related languages and where its usage was mostly confined to religious purposes during the ceremonies conducted by the Bimo or the priests. Uh, the scripts are not standardized and vary from place to place. In accordance with the classification which takes the formal features of the writing as the basis, it can be subdivided into um, five main varieties corresponding to the variety varieties of the language. They include a script var variety used by speakers of the Northern E dialect or Nosu, a script variety, uh, the Nisu script variety used by the Southern E dialect users, the uh, Sunny script variety used by the uh, South Eastern dialect users and also um, the other script variety used by the South Eastern dialect users uh, and the fifth uh, e-script variety is uh, Nasu script used by the users of the uh, Eastern e dialects. And these scripts, these scripts demonstrate features that confirm the common origin and unity of these scripts on the one hand, and features that point to the diversity on the other hand. The common uh, feature include um, sign structure and principles of sign formation in general, correspondence in the form of a number of graphs that can be found in all representations. Um, besides, all the scripts represent the same system of writing. And the, the diversity of the uh, regional varieties of traditional writing relates to diversity in the general appearance of graphs in particular varieties due to the stroke shapes typical for these varieties. Different signaries with distinct uh, characteristics. So many graphs can be found only in particular varieties or are used only by particular users. Uh, diversified orthographies resulting from individual rules concerning the choice of graph to represent a given word. Direction of reading the script, including the aspect of graph's orientation in a text. And special symbols used in the scripts. So first I would like to refer to the common features, uh, sign structure and principles of sign formation goes first. 
uh, each e graph is composed of a certain number of strokes. According to um, Chinese scholar Chen Shilin, who was a specialist um, and made some research on the uh, writing system, there are 20 most common strokes that can be found in all varieties of the script that, however, may display some features typical for a given script variety. Uh, those strokes also have some variant forms and in the dictionaries containing the graphs from a certain script variety, the number of strokes under which the graphs uh, are classified uh, might be different, usually it's higher. <coughs> in, the in these scripts, the basic structure of graph is based on a basic stroke, which can be called a stem, to which some additional symbols can be attached. So there are some series of graphs containing a certain stem, with different additional symbols. And the illustration here uh, shows four examples of stems and several graphs in which they occur. The graphs are uh, from the Norse script used to write down Northern E dialect. And the next illustration shows uh, five stems which are used in uh, four mm, e-script varieties. Uh, so um, the rules of uh, coining new signs were generally uh, similar in uh, all the varieties of the script. <coughs> uh, generally speaking, there is no systematic relationship between the shape of a stem or position of those additional symbols and the sound or meaning of a graph, although it should be noted that some graphs demonstrating such a relation do exist, and I will refer to that issue later in my speech. Another uh, common feature of the traditional of the e-writing system of the traditional e-writing is uh, correspondence in the form of a number of graphs that can be found in all e-script varieties. So, among thousands of graphs which make up the sign array. Uh, of different varieties of the e-writing. There are a number of graphs common to all varieties. Those graphs are, I call corresponding or common signs. The forms of graphs considered as corresponding or homographic um, considered as corresponding uh, sorry, um, ahomographic or near homographic, as they might differ <coughs> slightly in their shape with respect to the features typical of a given script. The uh, similarities include the type and position of strokes, which sometimes could vary, the general appearance of a graph, possibly the most important factor, and also the number of strokes, which sometimes could vary. Mm. The illustration shows five groups of corresponding signs, which I identified for five varieties of e writing. Um, the Nosu, the Sani, uh, Aje, Nisu and Nasu. Uh, on the basis of 20 text uh, representing those varieties. As the graphs are mostly used as syllabograms, the meaning indicated in the table 
is, is only one of their possible meanings. And the common or corresponding signs often but not always has similar sounds. They could also but not necessarily be used to write the same words. Among the signs that are included in the illustration, um, <coughs> the graphs of Aja and Nisu scripts um, uh, under the word uh, black, so those two uh, are except exceptions in this respect as they uh, as the sound of them is, is very different from, from the other uh, signs. It is evident that the forms of corresponding signs differ to some extent, but they retain similarities of their general appearance. So possibly they can be regarded as kind of variants of one graph in the e-writing system in general. The common graphs, as they appear in all the original representations, might be considered the oldest ones and constitute the core part of the uh, writing system. Um, they prove its unity, but also partly reveal its diversity, for their forms are not always homographic, even in the texts representing one variety. Then, um, all the uh, scripts represent the same system of writing in which a syllable is a basic linguistic unit represented by a single graph. The graphs tend to represent syllables rather than morphemes or words as the sound value of the syllable seems to be a main criterion underlying the choice of a, of a certain sign to write a given morphem so two homophonous morphemes might be written with the same sign, irrespectively of the meaning of the morphemes. However, it is important to notice that the writing system obviously is not a pure syllabic system, because in some cases the graphs are used according to the meaning represented by a morpheme. Um, in particular, script varieties, the number of graphs exceeds the number of possible syllab syllables. So uh, one syllable may, be, uh, may have several graphic representations. A common feature is an interchangeable use of graphs. So not only is one graph used to write down several homophones, but also several homophones could be represented interchangeably by several graphs, within, even within uh, one text. Uh, this feature is illustrated with three groups of graphs that were found in a text from Xinping County uh, representing Nisu variety. Uh, the interchangeable use of signs seems to be a typical conventions of using the graphs in the scripts. I attested it in the 20 texts uh, representing all varieties of the traditional writing. It seems to confirm that the phonetic principle was the dominant factor which determined the convention of using graphs in the scripts. The interchangeable use of several signs to represent several meanings indicates that the sound value of a given morpheme determines the relatively free choice of a proper sign to represent the morpheme. Um, now I would like to focus on the diversity uh, feature of the traditionally writing. Um, first, the diversity in the general appearance of graphs in particular scripts um, 
is due to the stroke shapes typical for particular vari varieties and it is visible uh, in the illustration that shows the examples of corresponding graphs in the scripts. Uh, the main feature which distinguishes the graphs of the Nosu variety in terms of the formal appearance of the graphs is the straight stroke and circular or oval shapes of certain graphs, whereas the corresponding signs uh, of Nosu and Sani uh, and sometimes also of Aja Mm, script varieties are often triangular uh, and uh, Nasu ones are fairly irregular in shape. Besides, uh, the strokes <coughs> of the Nasu graphs are often crooked and uh, wavy. So despite the fact that the scripts comprise a certain number of corresponding signs, those signs as well as other graphs used within a certain variety have some distinctive features which allow, um, which allow uh, recognizing um, the scripts on the basis of those features. <coughs> uh, another um, feature that indicates on the diversity of the traditional rewriting are um, different signaries with distinct characteristics. Uh, many graphs uh, can be found only in particular varieties or are used by particular users. The number of graphs in particular, vari in particular varieties of rewriting is very big and reaches several thousands. Uh, for example, there are about um, 21,000 distinct signs collected from uh, the NOSU scripts. Over uh, 17,000 uh, distinct signs collected from um, Guajo scriptures representing NASU variety. Uh, 2,500 signs collected from Sunny scripts and about uh, 16,000 distinct signs collected from uh, Niso scripts. Uh, nevertheless, uh, a single user of this script made use of a um, limited number of graphs, although its precise number is not clear and needs further research. I am, I am not sure what was the usual number of signs which was used by a single BMO, for example. <coughs> uh, presumably, there are many graphs that appear just in a limited number of places or even only in the scriptures that belong to one BMO. I have examined <coughs> the graphs representing the Nosu variety listed in a collection of 8,000 distinct graphs used in the scriptures coming from the different places in the Liangshan area. Uh, this collection is called the Yuan Dan Zekui and it was published in 1983. Uh, the material uh, gives an indication of the area in which a particular graph uh, was used and from my research it follows that only relatively few strictly homographic signs were commonly used in the scriptures from all of these ten places. <coughs> uh, I have found uh, exactly 109 such graphs. Um, the illustration presents signs that were homographic in at least nine out of the 10 regions. Most of these signs appear to be quite sim simple in form 
and they can also be found <coughs> in other scripts of the Nasu, uh, Nisu, Sani, and other. Uh, So um, they they are mm, corresponding. They can be called uh, corresponding signs. The percentage of these graphs in relation to the total number of graphs listed in the investigated material is low, less than 10 percent. <coughs> uh, many signs presented in uh, this material, even than the Kuiji. Were also found in two to eight places, and some of them can also be found in other script varieties as corresponding signs. Nevertheless, within the data presented in this material, the number of graphs that have been found only in the text from one area is remarkably high. Mm, graphs of this kind are the most frequent, in fact among the total number of over uh, 8,000 distinct signs uh, listed in this collection. Of course, as the editors of this material point out, the data presented in Yuen Dan Zi Hui Ji cannot be treated as uh, definitive for these 10 areas because for some of the places only a limited number of texts were available. Nevertheless, uh, such a limited uh, number of strictly uh, homographic graphs shared by the user of the scripts in all investigated areas as well as the um, dominant number of signs that were found only in one of those ten places hints at the uh, discrepancies in sign, in, in sign inventories of particular users within, uh, within one variety. The graphs particular for a certain area resulted from the process of individual script development because the scripts evolved separately in particular regions together with the languages spoken by, the by their users who seldom came into mutual contact. A certain number of graphs were thus individually created in different places to comply with the needs of the changing, way, uh, of the changi changing languages and with different um, needs of the users of the scripts. Besides, the specific function of traditionally writing influenced the process of diversification of regional scripts. Mm, the traditional writing was used in communication only to a limited extent, and the BIMO wrote, a cop wrote or copy the scriptures rather for themselves, as the ritual texts used by BIMO were mainly written for recitation as a kind of memory ad rather than for reading, rather than for reading for, um, by the other people. So the lack of any need for explicitness in writing resulted in the extensive creation of local graphical variants. Epimo could create his own versions of graphs and incorporated them into the uh, signaries um, as um, many researchers Point out, point out uh, Bima often did it. So uh, this is partly a result of um, the, diversifi the diversified scenery, uh, partly uh, a result of this practice. <coughs> Another um, feature which uh, shows the diversity of the tradition of the um, e-writing system are uh, um, diversified orthographies <coughs> resulting from individual rules concerning the choice of graph to represent a given word. 
As the scripts of traditionally writing were not standardized and also because of the specific function mentioned above, um, their typical feature were diversified orthographies. Uh, the graphs used to represent four words in this illustration um, prove this feature. Um, the illustration shows some examples of alternative graphs used in particular varieties to represent a given word, but it is also a characteristic feature of the uh, writing system that even in one text a given word or a morphem could be written alternatively with several graphs. So now I would like to refer to the direction of reading the script, including the aspect of uh, sign orientation. Uh, expect of the Nosu e scriptures, the graphs in e texts are uh, written in vertical columns arranged from left to right, but there are also places where the arrangement from right to left is more common. Um, the texts are read in the same way, the same, in the same direction as they are written. However, in the case of the Nosu variety, the convention is quite different, as the graphs in Nosu texts are written in vertical columns from left to right, but when read, the texts um, are rotated 90 degrees clockwise. <coughs> and the direction of reading is then from right to left in uh, horizontal lines. Um, also, another way of writing is practiced in which the graphs are written uh, in vertical columns from right to left in a Chinese manner and then uh, are read uh, after rotating the text 19, uh, 90 degree uh, counterclockwise. So they are read in horizontal lines from uh, left to right. Uh, the differences between um, These scripts also comprise some special symbols, such as stops or symbols expressing uh, reduplication. Uh, the symbol of uh, reduplication enables the writer of a text to avoid uh, writing a given <coughs> sign again and to replace it with a reduplication symbol that is usually simpler in form. It is especially useful when the form of a graph to be repeated is quite elaborated. The form of the reduplication symbol is conventional. Uh, however, though infrequent, other forms also appear. Uh, the usual form is the first example and the others are the less frequent ones that can be found in some, uh, in some scripts. Uh, some special symbols indicating the end of a verse or a sentence were used in some areas. They could help a bimo to recite the text properly. This Sim symbols are also helpful in, un in understanding texts written in an archaic language that was very different from the spoken variety and which was uh, often used in uh, the scriptures uh, possessed by uh, Bima. The form of these symbols varies uh, here. Uh, some examples uh, of those um, symbols for stop. Uh, 
Nevertheless, uh, some certain regional regular, uh, regularities of uh, the usage of them can be observed. Uh, never, uh, nevertheless, the symbols of stop or of the end of a verse was not used in the scriptures representing no script variety. Uh, the time when traditionally writing was invented is not clear and is a matter of debate. Nevertheless, at least in the 15th century, which is the time of the Chinese Ming Dynasty, it was already in use, more or less in its present form, which is attest what is attested by an inscription from that period. Um, the inscription, which is dated on the, at the end of the 15th century, uh, 1485, is made on a copper bell and is known as the bell inscription from the Changhua period. In Chinese, it's Changhua to Mingwen. It seems to be the oldest known E inscription, at least one with an attested date of origin. The inscription is written both in Yi and Chinese characters, as it was often practiced by non-Chinese people who wrote inscriptions in their own language and with scripts other than Chinese. Other oldest inscriptions written in Yi, as well as that one, were found in northeastern Yunnan and the western Guizhou provinces. So. Uh, that was presumably the area where e-writing came into being, although it's not going to the, the area and the problem of uh, of the time when the um, e-writing was created is not going to be a topic of this speech. <coughs> Just would like to mention this. Um, it is not known uh, what shape had the writing at the very beginning of its development, but noteworthy is the fact that the graphs that we can see on the earliest known artifacts are quite similar to those which appear in the more recent examples of the scripts. The first column, columns, uh, here, the Tuaji tablet and Lanlong Chao Beiji uh, uh, um, So the first two columns pre present signs from some problematic cases of two inscriptions. The tablet of records of Tuaji merits, the Tuaji Ji Gongbei, and the a Lanlong bridge in tablet inscription, Lanlong Chao Beiji, uh, whose date of origin is not, uh, is not certain. Although some scholars argue that they might be older, older than the bell inscription from the Changhua period. Um, so I included the signs from those two inscriptions uh, simply for the purpose of showing that even if the claims about the early origin could be proved, they would not lead to any groundbreaking conclusions concerning the early form of the graphs as all those graphs from different uh, centuries are generally similar. And form. <coughs> Some scholars argue that the writing must have had its origins in pictography because of the number of signs which can be interpreted as pictographic signs. Um, however, there is no evidence like um, evidence C 
similar to Chinese Jiaguan, that is the script on oracle bones from the Shang Dynasty. Um, to conclude that these signs have their roots in pictographic writing like Chinese characters do. Besides, it is hard to believe that in such close proximity with Chinese culture, the people who developed the earliest form of e-writing didn't have any contact with Chinese characters. Uh, because of the geographical vicinity of the Chinese Empire and the fact that many cultures in the surrounding area based their scripts on Chinese characters, the question of the possible influence of Chinese script on the writing arises quite naturally. It seems reasonable to assume that connection between Yi and Chinese scripts does exist and uh, it at least refers to the general idea of writing, which presumably was learned by the ancestors of the Yi from the Chinese neighbors, along with the increasing contacts, which started after unification of China by Qin Dynasty in the third century before Common Era, when the Chinese Empire started to invade southern regions of China. I generally agree with John De Francis, who argues that the influence of Chinese script could be implied by the fact that the Yi preferred to develop a script, a syllabic script, rather than one based on an alphabetic principle. The scripts that were based on an alphabetic principles were widely used by their neighbors, for example, the Tibetans and the Thai people. But on the other hand, there were the Vietnamese and the Zhuang who adopted Chinese scripts to write their languages, uh, plus uh, also some other ethnic groups in the surrounding area that also developed their system of writing on Chinese characters, for example, this way from Guizhou province. This kind of influence of Chinese script can be traced even in Vietnamese alphabetic script, which can be seen on the, mm, in the illustration, in which uh, the syllables of a polysyllabic words are always written separately. Also in uh, Korean script, which is also an alphabetic writing, the letters are grouped into syllables, into syllables uh, shaped like blocks that resemble Chinese, that resemble, sorry, uh, Chinese characters. So, um, three, uh, three syllabic blocks are used for a three syllabic word here, and two syllabic blocks are used for a two-syllable uh, word um, here. <coughs> it is widely known that the influence of Chinese culture and civilization in East Asia resulted in creation of scenographic writing systems related in different degrees to Chinese system of writing and Chinese characters. Although the level of resemblance between the signs of those systems and Chinese characters vary and sometimes is very poor, uh, the common feature of most of them is the fact that they are mostly base, based on syllabic principle of written sign. Indeed, indeed Traditionally, writing is usually regarded as a scenographic script which developed under the influence of Chinese characters. It is regarded as a cineform type of script in contrast to those like Japanese, Vietnamese, uh, Zhuang, or Korean, written with Chinese characters, uh, which represent cinetic type of script in which Chinese characters remain intact or unchanged, at least in the, in the majority. 
So unlike cinetic type of scripts, the cineform scripts are not direct derivatives from Chinese characters. Their graphs or units resemble Chinese characters in different ways, as they were developed through various techniques of borrowings, modifications, and transformations of Chinese characters. For example, we have the Tangut uh, script developed in the 11th century and used in Western Xia or Tangut Empire. Mm, characters of this script only in a roughly manner resemble Chinese characters, but in its linguistic structure, the Tangut script is quite similar to Chinese one as its single graph is always matched with a single syllable of the language and usually also corresponds to a single morphem. Then we have two uh, Kitan scripts, uh, Kitan large script and Kitan small script. Here is an example of the Kitan small script. <coughs> um, the graph, uh, uh, the Kitan scripts were uh, used by the Liao dynasty, which was uh, uh, was used in the Liao dynasty and created in the uh, tenth century by uh, Kitans. Uh, the graphs of the large script, which can be seen here, uh, mm, resemble distorted Chinese characters. Sometimes they look like Chinese characters written by a person who doesn't understand structure and arrangement um, of graphical elements of Chinese characters. Nevertheless, the um, Kitan large script is a, a mixture of syllabograms and morphemograms. And then um, the Kitan small script um, it is a syllabary with some possible exceptions of signs which correspond rather to morphemes, um, which um, possibly might be uh, polysyllabic. Uh, a cineform script is also a Jordan script. Uh, which was inspired by both Chinese and Kitan scripts and used for several uh, centuries by the uh, Jin dynasty of Georgians. Uh, Georgian script is a mixture of syllabograms and morphemograms uh, with some polysyllabic graphs and they, uh, its graphs uh, look like modified and um, distorted Chinese characters. The e system of writing is graphically still very different from the uh, cineform types of scripts just mentioned, as it is made up by graphs whose shape doesn't bear a direct resemblance to Chinese characters. The text written with the script doesn't resemble very much uh, a Chinese text, at least not in a straightforward way. Um, first of all, the graphs doesn't consist of the same types of strokes as well as of more complex elements that would resemble elements typical for Chinese characters. 
However, as some uh, scholars argue, um, there are some graphs in these scripts that are similar to Chinese characters, but uh, mostly not to those of regular style that are um, that is in use in official writing since Han Dynasty up to today, but rather to those that appear on ancient coins, pottery, weapons, and um, imperial seals, stuff, stuff like that. Uh, the copper coins in particular were very good source for the new graphs because of the simplicity of the characters found of them. Uh, this illustration shows um, ten five E graphs, which can be, um, which could be borrowed from Chinese script. They were, um, they were only, um, they are only examples of other signs which were identified by the. Chinese linguist Chen Shilin and presented in, his, in the uh, article published in 1993. Um, usually, um, uh, the connection between the graphs and the Chinese counterparts uh, was it seems it was only the shape of Chinese of Chinese characters, but in some cases um, there is not only connection between shape of Chinese of, of e graphs and Chinese characters, which I, I agree might be accidental, especially because of the simplicity of the form of those signs, but also there is a connection between the meaning of them. Uh, or between sound they represent. It means that they made use of two basic principles of borrowing Chinese characters to represent their native language, that is semantic and phonetic principles which were also intensively exploited in other scenographic scripts, including cineform type of scripts such as Kitan and Jordan's. Uh, scripts. When borrowed <coughs> phonetically, a character was used by virtue of the sound it represented in Chinese, irrespective of its meaning, uh, for writing a homophonous or phon phonetically similar uh, word. The, ca the character thus got a new meaning or was meaningless as a syllabic sign but the reading didn't change uh, radically. Um, an example found in the Nosso script uh, by uh, Chen Shilin is presented here. Uh, and uh, as you can see, the um, form of the Yi graph is not exactly the same as the form of the of its Chinese counterparts, but the sound <coughs> of those two graphs are um, similar. So um, possibly this graph was uh, borrowed from a Chinese script. <coughs> uh, were, uh, when borrowed semantically, a character was used according to the meaning of the word and uh, it represented in Chinese. The character was given a, uh, given a new reading, but its meaning didn't change. Uh, and was the same as the meaning of the, uh, source, uh, of the source character in Chinese. Here you can see two examples of such characters which could serve as um, source character for these scripts. Uh, in case of that one, um, 
this is a, a cursive form of, of the character for, uh, for water, for shui <coughs> in Chinese. And the graphs, um, derived from Chinese characters, once adapted to the writing system, were not only used to represent a given syllable, but also uh, some of them also served as a stem for the creation of new graphs. Uh, the principles for the creation of new graphs were typical of V writing, so the additional elements were added to this borrowed graph, in this case serving as a stem, in purpose to create a new sign. Um, there are also differences in the structural composition between E graphs and Chinese characters. As it was demonstrated earlier, the structure of a E sign based, uh, is basically based on a meaningless stem to which some supplementary symbols are added. However, there are some exceptions. Uh, some scholars have found examples of graphs which contain a kind of semantic classifier to which supplementary elements were added in purpose of modifying their meaning. It might uh, thus suggest that scribes <coughs> intentionally made, uh, wanted to use some stems as a semantic classifier, um, perhaps uh, using the um, principle which was uh, exploited in creation of Chinese characters uh, on an early stage of their development, that is the uh, simple, simply indicative uh, principle in Chinese, it is zhi uh, shi. Sometimes a connection uh, between a stem and a sound is also visible as there are series of graphs containing a certain stem and the sounds of those graphs are similar. Uh, for example, they might differ only in tone. Uh, nevertheless, it must be said that uh, such connection between the uh, meaning of the, um, the, the meaning of the uh, stem and the meaning of the um, characters created on the base of those stems, as well as the connection between the sound of a stem and uh, the sound of uh, new characters. Uh, created on the base of such a stem is not a rule and uh, there are many other graphs containing those stems which don't display these uh, features. Uh, there are also a few examples of signs which were created by the means of the most productive principle in formation of Chinese characters that is a semantic phonetic or Xinxiang principle by making up uh, a graph from two elements, one referring to the sound of a written word uh, sorry, one referring to the sound of a word uh, written with the graph and uh, one referring to its meaning. Uh, the three graphs uh, presented here seem to be um, based on this um, semantic phonetic principle. They all consist of uh, one element which 
hints at the uh, sound of this graph and uh, an element which hints on the uh, meaning of the graph. Uh, some of um, those elements can uh, also um, some of the elements uh, which uh, uh, which are uh, semantic elements also can um, can um, can be used in those graphs as uh, phonetic elements uh, like here the wells uh, this graph consists of a semantic phonetic element the two, uh, which means money, and the semantic element, uh, which means uh, grain. So those two elements have uh, has, uh, have meanings which has something to do with uh, wells, and only one of them is used as a phonet phonetic uh, element in this graph. Uh, nevertheless, the number of this kind of graphs is limited and is restricted mainly to one variety of the uh, writing system, that is the uh, NASO variety. Do we have some time more? I think I should finish. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I will finish. <laughs> here and maybe you have some questions which may lead to some conclusions. Thank you. Yeah, uh, so uh, I had this question at the beginning, I think it's um, partly uh, responded and uh, answered by the, by, by the whole, whole presentation, but I think it will still be quite uh, and quite at least useful for me way to, to, to frame the thing. It's like uh, how does the, is there any like a uh, solid uh, correlation between the script variation and dialect variation because the way that uh, it's presented looks like you know you have the you have the emotions almost as like a third people who who have a, who have a who have a like a linguistically well defined uh, language and the linguistic and the like uh, scriptorially well defined written language which is uh, at least not the way it works here in Europe for example if you're in, if you're European you can like speak uh, something close to French uh, as as your home language and you and you write something and you write Italian or German or things like that and so uh, so like in general how well founded is empirically is the notion that the dialect boundary is here and 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 the BMOS writes the the same company this way on this side of the bind boundary and magically on that side of the boundary in another way. Mm, I am not sure <laughs> if I understand your question. Um, I think the you, you asked for, uh, about the connection between the script and the language and... Yeah, the, 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 the script of variety and the language of variety. So, so if the language... So they write in their own... Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, rather something like, uh, does like, if, if the same, if the same cognate, uh, uh, is it, uh, are there like many cases in which like, uh, it's written one way on uh, uh, one way on the language uh, uh, on this side of the language boundary and another way on that side of the language boundary. Mm, I am afraid I, I am not really able to answer your question. Uh, maybe some other researchers can. Uh, Any other questions? Do you, do you, um, Can you simplify your question a bit more? Because, you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure <laughs> you, but, you know, um, maybe simple is the best, I think. <laughs> no. <laughs> so if you want to know how we can determine 
the border between uh, Daleks, no, or no, interrelation. No, 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 because the border between Daleks is, of course, the, 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 the actual spirit and language, which are very different, mm -hmm. and like a homeless and intelligent. That, that's mm -hmm. easy to determine. But mm -hmm. does, uh, does the variation in the script uh, like, uh, correlate uh, very well geographically to the uh, dialect mm -hmm. variation? Mm -hmm. It's quite complicating, I think. For example, um, Sani, its dialect yeah. is, um, for example, by Bradley. Um, he actually, um, just let me have a look at my paper. <laughs> He yeah, because of course there are like Christian brothers to Sanis who, who speak to, like this. Um, Central Lolish. But the other three, Nasu and uh, Nosu and uh, uh, Nisu, uh, rapidly classify them um, Northern Lolish. And uh, Sani, only Sani belongs to um, Central Lolish. So it's you know, um, yeah, but like, uh, does for example, for for two different. So it inflects the difference of the character. Uh, like, like for example, if you have the Nasu and the Nisu, mm -hmm. so so like, of course, uh, of course, if you speak to the people, you know mm -hmm. who is Nasu and who is Nisu. But like, uh, uh, does like a, um, a Nasu Bimo necessarily arise in a very different way? It's like the diversity within a language area is like um, uh, more uh, stronger than uh, than the border between language areas. Oh, it's actually it's, um, the diversity uh, observed among uh, the E scripts is not very um, simple to. Uh, the answer because, um, for example, Sani in its script is quite um, distinctive from the others, and uh, um, there exist uh, many characters only found within Sani, Sani. and it, it's very different. And but, for example, in the dialects uh, of uh, Nasu. Yeah. The situation in Guizhou and uh, in Yunnan is also very different, but there exist, of course, um, similar characters. So it's, you know, it's very difficult to answer in a few words because the situations are uh, various and, uh, you know, maybe the conditions and, uh, um, are also different. So okay, because uh, at the uh, in the beginning of the of the presentation, what like actually spurred my question was like this very neat classification of like uh, there are people speaking this language and they have this script, and I kind of think that might oh, exactly are... be the case, but it's like just mm -hmm. uh, some kind of conventional shorthand for like yeah, yeah for, for, so, for, for doing things in an easy way. Uh, yeah. Maybe there are uh, thousands of allographs actually. Yeah. And. Uh, now I'm trying to um, clarify how um, each character has changed throughout history. So in that case, we need to uh, as many allegories as possible. And uh, we have to uh, find some continuum among them. And uh, I try to but it's not very easy because um, that depends on the data, amount of the data. For example, um, Nasu, uh, the Eastern dialect, they got quite a lot of data. But for example, Sani, very, very few. So in that case, we can't decide very easily. Yeah, but like for the main area, then, then my understanding from what you said is like it's uh, there is a huge internal diversity and mm -hmm. and like oh uh, they are totally not intelligible. Yeah, uh, 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 no, for the written language, for for for, for, for the script uh, for the mm -hmm. for the script practices, there mm -hmm. is like huge internal diversity which mm -hmm. which like do not uh, necessarily. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, correspond with the actual linguistic uh, border. 
Um, I don't picture what you really uh, want to express by linguistically. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, uh, do we have some kind of like new market? It might be easy that way. You don't think so? No, I don't see. Let's talk about that. Maybe we can discuss it. If there is any other question, should we take a break? Let's take a break. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just want one one question. I really appreciated your talk very much. I think this is an extremely complex thing. When the editors asked me to write the introduction to this translation of the novel, tell you they asked me to put something in there about the history of e language and stuff. I have just you know it was very difficult for me. I was using Punkett. I was not aware of your study. I wish I had had this thing when I had written that. But at any at any Right. In terms of this uh, possible influences somehow or another, I'm just wondering, um, I came across this thing called uh, Turkic rune script, this very, very ancient Turkic type of thing uh, the other day that seems to have some characters which kind of sort of look like E. And I'm just wondering if, if people had thought about that possible connection because there's all these elements of E culture, such as felting and all this other stuff that somehow or another seems to point towards Central Asia or across the below the Himalayas or something like that. Whether or not that that might even be a possibility of some small group of people somehow or another arrive in Southwest China. We know that some Indian princes or something came over there at some point I don't very know. early on. But I, I, you know, I, I, from, from, from a non-linguist, you know, this is the sort of question you might get, but I'm just wondering if anybody had thought about uh, that sort of thing. And also with uh, this whole thing of transmission of these texts from Imo to the various students and what happens in the act of copying. Um, is there creativity going on? I mean, some of these examples we're looking at, you know, from Qing Ming Dynasty, supposedly you would imagine some of these would have been carried down in the form of scrolls, but where, how recent is this creation of newer characters taking place? Is this something that was more common a few hundred years ago, or is this something that's still taking place today? Because um, we know that some of these Bimo, they're, they're still copying these scripts yeah. today, so. Yeah, but we, we don't have any examples of the earlier artifacts, except of, of this one from the end of 15th century. So we, we can just, we can only guess <laughs> something. There might be connections, like, like you said, with the runic Turkic script, but also, the e, uh, characters, the graphs, are very similar to the, some of them at least, are very similar to the um, graphs used by Sui people who live in uh, Guizhou province. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend sure. is making oh. some research on, on the Sui script mm -hmm. and uh, I, some of them are identical. Oh, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. but in the Sui script, there are more um, graphs which are um, similar to Chinese characters than in the mm -hmm. script. In, in the script, there is only, I think, there are very, very few ones which, are, which really look like Chinese characters, except this five, this Wu, there are just few. And so. <laughs> The answer to the question is, I think, is not really possible, but we can speculate about the possible uh, origin of, of the script. There are also uh, some, some e, especially e scholars, also says they claim they claim that the e script is connected with some um, signs found in the, uh, near Xi'an, the Bampo village. There's, there's few scratches on the on the pottery. They're also similar to the script. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe the beginning of um, characters or something might be um, from you know 
pictographic symbols and maybe basic um, characters might have um, a certain similarity, I guess. Yeah. Perhaps. So that's why possible. maybe yeah. you know we can find some you know similar similarity among. Well, such. I've also heard that Chinese characters are based on early e script too. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>